right, Gus, thanks for joining me on the podcast, mate. It's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure. No problem at all. Good to talk to you, brother. Now, when I, when I planned to get you on, Gus, it was a couple of weeks back and I was sitting in, in Collaroy at the, the Stay Grounded Cafe and I noticed on the menu um, the Gotcha for Life breakfast. Uh, <laughs> you're $1.50 going back into your, your great cause there. We're going to talk a lot more about Gotcha for Life today, but um, that was when, when I kind of looked into more about what you're doing and I just wanted to commend you on, on uh, commands respect all the great work you're doing in the community to promote mental fitness. What can you tell me about, about um, Gotcha for Life, mate? Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I started it off the back of a TV show that I did on the ABC called Man Up. And Man Up really challenged masculinity in this country and why we lose so many blokes to suicide. You can still see it if you want to. It's on the ABC iView, which is their catch-up streaming service. We've had over 100 million views now, which is quite amazing for a little three-part documentary that I did all those years ago. But I did the show Man Up because I lost a friend of mine in November of 2006 to suicide. And uh, he was a bloke that I absolutely adored. He he was the go-to guy within my life. I used to talk to him all the time about why the personal or business stuff. I He was just always the go-to guy. I just really loved his company. He gave me great advice. And I just couldn't believe it was someone that seemed to have everything, ticked all the boxes, married, children, status inside of work, status outside of work, that he would ever do something like that. I just couldn't believe it. And I sat there like most people for years, just getting angry on event anniversaries. And then eventually I decided to do something about it, did the Man Up program, and then said, well, I need to do more. So I want to help as much as I could. So I started Gotcha for Life. And that's been going six years now. And the, the, the name of the foundation gives away what we're trying to do, which is people finding someone in their life that's got them for life, you know, warts and all. Without any fear of judgment, you can talk to them about anything, you know, a deeper level of friendship than perhaps we normally have. And we need to work on that because we've been told all our lives to man up, shut up, you know, take a teaspoon of cement, harden the you know the what up. Um, I just think that's nonsense. You know, I, I think there's times for that. Of course, we can't burst into tears every five minutes or have a deep and meaningful combo every time we want to talk. But surely we should have in our lives people that we can talk to about the important stuff. And uh, there's not enough of us doing that. We lose seven blokes a day every day. We lose two women every day. We live, we have people attempting suicide every few minutes, there's 65,000 attempts a year just in Australia alone. Those numbers worldwide are 1,900 people a day taking their own life and 38,000 attempts of suicide a day, every day. So it goes to show that not just in Australia, but right across the world, we've got this issue. So I started Gotcha for Life. Uh, we've fundraised over 12 million bucks so far. We give that back to people that work in suicide prevention. And um, yeah, that's my day-to-day -day work. I, I work on Triple M uh, brec uh, Breakfast for many, many years, but now the drive show. And uh, yeah, that's the balance that I have in life, you know, the important stuff. And then a little bit of nonsense on the radio to pay some bills. Yeah, and it's such uh, it's such a pertinent topic, isn't it? You talked about um, how you know having having that mate in your life and thinking he had everything, but unfortunately, you know, you don't. We don't know what people are going through. You look at, for instance, Paul Green from from the Cowboys recently and the way he took his own life, and you look at him and after win, winning premierships and you know leading his team, um, the Cowboys to victory there, and you know thinking that you know you could be wrong for thinking he had everything but unfortunately as you said those statistics add up and they're quite grim aren't they so around 3,139 Australians took their lives during 2020 during the pandemic um, year that when things kicked off there and around 12.1 individuals per 100,000 uh, take their own lives so it's really really uh, emphasizes what you just said there and, and what you were talking to now in episode 10 Gus, we had Ben Woods on, on the podcast. Now, um, in, his, in his episode, we discussed the 20,000-kilometer cycle that he did in, across Australia in 193 days, uh, breaking the Guinness World Record for the furthest distance traveled um, in one country. And he set out to raise funds for his brother, Jace, who unfortunately also lost his um, battle with depression and took his own life. So the goal of Ben's journey was to pass through every state and territory, ge generating more of a conversation around mental 
mental health. And I think that really feeds into what, what we're discussing today and what the work you're doing with, with uh, Gotcha for Life. You know, that ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That, that quote's one of my favorite quotes. And I think that sort of emphasizes what you're trying to do with the Gotcha for Life Foundation in terms of starting more of a com conversation earlier um, in, in young men and women's lives generating that mental resilience and then coping, developing coping skills to prevent, you know, those fatalities. Yeah. I mean, from my point of view, you know, I'm sort of sick of awareness. You know, I love the fact that Woodsy went off and did what he did. That's awesome. You know, like action, going into places, stopping every night, having conversations. So that's what it's about. If you don't know there's a problem in mental fitness in Australia, well, you've been living under a rock. So let's just stop talking about it and let's actually get on and do something about it. This podcast here, what Woodsy's doing, all what all the work that I do, the facilitators that I help get out there into schools and sporting clubs and into corporations. I mean, it's time for Australia to take this stuff seriously and stop talking about it and actually action stuff, like do things. You hear those stats and they're shocking, but they're real and they're happening every single day. So what are we doing about them? And if you look at the problem around mental health and mental fitness around the world, it's probably too big a problem to deal with. If you look at it as an Australian problem, it's, it's still a huge problem. A statewide thing, still too big, perhaps. So no one can stop you looking after your own village, though. No one can stop you looking at your own set of friends and family and go, am I doing enough to make sure that all those people are okay? They might be bumping through life. There might be ups and downs like it is being a human being. You'll get that. But are they worrying alone about something that they might end up making a permanent decision based on a temporary situation? Or are they actually able with enough emotional muscle to stick their hand up and say, I, I want to tell you something. This is what's truly going on. I don't want to shout it from the rooftops. I just want to talk to you about it. I want to find a professional and talk to you about it. Whatever it might be, there's way too many Aussies at the moment worrying alone about stuff. So we need to teach them to put their hand up and then we need to give them the help that they require. And let's not think about the crisis points. Let's build some emotional muscle up when life's actually traveling along okay you know like start topping up your your skill set when you're 20 percent um not at 80 percent or 90 percent where it's more of a crisis so we do crisis pretty well in australia lifeline is an amazing setup they do great work and they're well funded let's start funding and talking about prevention so people are actually not getting to the stage where they're actually ringing lifeline or need to um, ring lifeline it's a huge journey for that to go on but we have to start it now surely all right gus let's talk about how gotcha for life is taking that action so you discussed about the funding program delivery through expert facilitators so tomorrow man tomorrow women breaking yep. down those stereotypes but also the weave cool kids which i understand are working a lot with the indigenous community so those mm -hmm. at risk populations yep and then so what services merchandise events is gotcha for life uh currently working on and, and promoting what's in the pipeline yeah there's lots of work going on at the moment we're actually about to uh talk about a a, a big sporting group in australia they're going to take gotcha for life on as their charity partner and where it's all around mental fitness uh you mentioned it earlier in your in your intro mental health's got a bad rap makes you think that it's someone else's problem makes you think that it's a problem that's probably not really for me well, let's talk about mental fitness, just like your physical fitness gives you an opportunity to give yourself a mark out of 10 and go, well, whatever that mark is, I, I can improve. And how can I improve? And so Gotcha for Life is all about giving you those exercises for you to actually learn how to put your hand up and ask for help, build stronger relationships, deeper relationships. Um, that's really what it's all about. We've got community events going on all the time, you know, community events that are free to people like, for instance, I'm on the northern beaches of, of Sydney. If you're in and around that area, we've got a freebie coming up in a week's time. Uh, we have freebies all the time in every state and territory. So you can actually go along and see these Tomorrow Man and Tomorrow Woman. If you follow us on our socials, you'll see that the dates are there. You can register just so we know how many people are coming. And then we put all that stuff on for free. So um, that's basically what Gotcha for Life does. We're an organisation that punches well and truly above our weight. We're six years in. As I said, we've raised all those millions of dollars and we're building this all the time. I think it's the most important conversation that we can have. And all our details are on the website, gotchaforlife.org. There's cool merchandise there. My kids are your age. So 
They've told me no daggy hats, dad, no daggy this and that. You know, it's pretty cool stuff that you can wear and it starts a conversation. That's all what we're really trying to do is build up enough emotional muscle to start a conversation that we're not quite having at the moment. We're really built for banter in Australia. We love taking the piss, having a laugh, and I love that as well. We just started the footy season. We've got the cricket on at the moment. Like, we love talking about that stuff. But at some point, we need to go, you know what, I'm parking that for for five minutes, and I'm going to talk about something a bit more important um, in terms of what's going on in my melon or or the emotions that I've been shoving down in my guts for all these years. So uh, that's what Gotcha for Life's all about. I love the way you you kind of personify the emotional resilience as a muscle. I think it's a great metaphor for kind of the way we should approach things, isn't it? Taking action to build that emotional um, resilience to try and strengthen coping strategies and benefit the health yeah, of our it's, society. It, it's emotional muscle, just like your physical muscle. I mean, have a look at you. You're built like a brick shit house. <laughs> you know, if, if people came up to you and said, how are you going? You'd go, well, how do you reckon I'm going? Have a look at me, you know, because we're told in, in life, we're told through media and, and public and TV shows and movies that people that look like you are strong and dependable and you've got all your shit together. Well, the simple fact is I've been to many, many gyms and blokes have walked up to me and they look fantastic and they go, but, it's up here, mate. It's up here that I worry. I go, no worries. Well, let's make you as, let's get that emotional muscle, just like your physical muscle up and running. So you can start having conversations. So you've got the full package of mental fitness and physical fitness. It takes as much time to build your emotional muscle as it does to build your physical muscle. In fact, it takes longer because you need to unlearn all the stuff we've been taught and you've got to relearn this new stuff. And that's why you young guys and girls are, You can set the standard now. You can put the line in the sand and go, you know what? There's a new set of rules of what it takes to be a boy and a girl, a man and a woman. We're not doing what mum and dad did and what grandma and granddad did. They did their best for their time, but this is our time, you know, because you guys are growing up in a very different place to when I grew up. I'm 54. I've got a 22, uh, nearly 23, 21 and a 20-year-old. They've grown up with social media. I never grew up with social media. That's just one huge thing that you guys are coping with compared to what I used to cope with. So uh, we can all help each other get through this. It's not a, I'm learning this from mum and dad stuff. Actually, mum and dad can learn from from sons and daughters. Yeah, and from my own experience, mate, you know, the social media world now and people in gyms and that, they're hiding behind a facade as well. You know, you, they might look strong and fit and healthy, but really up there mentally, you know, it can be um, quite a challenging place to be in their own head. So I think... What you're doing is fantastic. Moving over to, I guess, where you're more fo- formally known, Gus. Um, you've t- 10 years on Breakfast Radio. I'm sure many people who, who are listening to this podcast will remember you for is Triple M Grill Team. Um, so you're on this mm. 2009 to 2019. Um, you, you were awarded Best Air Newcomer in 2010 at the Australian Commercial Radio <laughs> Awards. You got the Astra Award with uh, Julia Morris for being involved as a team leader in the singing office. Aussie goes Bolly. Uh, it's probably where I remembered you from in the early days when I was at St. Augustine's and I remember <laughs> tuning into Fox sports, but you got the best uh, sports show on pay TV, the best, um, best doco there. So can you tell me a little bit more about your time on television and what you've learned from that experience and all the great um, experiences you've had there? That's a trip down memory lane. Thank you. Um, yeah. I mean, I was very, very lucky. I mean, most people that know me well know that my best friend is Hugh Jackman. You know, you may know him. Um, So he said to me one day, mate, I'm going to start a production company and I want to do a show around sport and around cricket. And I reckon you'd be the perfect person for it. And I'm like, I'm a 38 year old salesman up in the North of England at the time going, well, that sounds awesome, but how are we going to make all that happen? And Of course, you know, with a name like his and so forth, things do happen and doors do open. And we did an Aussie Goes Barmy, actually, was the first Aussie Goes uh, series where Australia had lost the ashes in 2005 and England were coming in 2000 and end of 2006, early 2007 to Australia. And there was a real feeling that there's going to be a real fight back because the Aussies had, you know, Warney. McGrath, all the really big guns, you know, Hayden, Simons, all that stuff. So anyway, we did a show called An Aussie Goes Barmy, where I lived with the Barmy Army England cricket supporters. You know, what makes them tick? What makes them save up for a lifetime to come and and watch their cricket team? So that went really well. And then we did An Aussie Goes Bolly that you mentioned, which was the same in India. 
And then we did an Aussie Goes Calypso, which was the same in the West Indies. Um, so that was a really great start for me, heaps of fun. And then I was promoting an Aussie Goes Calypso on radio on Triple M in Melbourne on their breakfast show. And the boss of Triple M was in a cab between the airport and the radio station. Perfect timing for me. I was telling some stories and he came and saw me and said, mate, I'm looking for a new breakfast show in Sydney. Would you be interested? And, you know, long story short, uh, a couple of months later, I was on Sydney radio. And like you said, I was on there for 10 years. Then had a couple of years doing a weekend sports show called um, Dead Set Legends. And now I'm doing the Rush Hour, which is the drive show, which is 4 p.m. till 6 p.m. And again, very sort of focused on sport, but fun and family and what's happening in Sydney. So I've had this wonderful run of, um, you know, radio in particular. I did the Man Up program six years ago, which started Gotcha for Life. And now I've just signed with Channel 9. So I'm doing Sports Sunday and the Today Show and Weekend Today and I'm about to we're about to do a pilot around mental fitness as well. So there's it's all sort of coming together again with TV coming back into my life. But my main focus since Gotcha for Life has started has been the charity and the foundation and making sure that we make real change in 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 the way that we think of um, mental fitness and not mental health. So changing that term and then also getting the suicide rate down to zero. Yeah, and I think, you know, you talked about um, also your sport, how you aligned almost your, your passions there. So you, you talked about the Gotcha for Life Foundation and how you got into working in the Triple M Grill Team, for instance, through your, you know, your experiences overseas with um, Aussie Goes Bolly, Aussie Goes Barmy, Aussie Goes Calypso. But I mm. guess that's really leveraged you and given you a bit of a platform to promote, you know, all of this mental health awareness and fitness. Do you think that's really helped you? Um, in terms of getting oh, the out there and growing Gotcha for Life? Hayden, there's no doubt in the world that having, you know, a having an opportunity like a, a soapbox to stand on, you know, every day and, and say, hey, over here, let's talk about mental fitness or over here, let's talk about, you know, men in particular on Triple M. You know, I get hundreds of notes every single week from people just asking me questions about, their son or daughter or themselves or a wife worried about their husband. There's so much going on at the moment in Australia in terms of pressure around mortgage and relationships. And they're the two biggest factors for suicide. They're not the only factors, but they're the two largest. So I'm quietly confident off the back of, we had a 5% drop last year in suicides. I'm hoping that stays the same, but there's so much pressure going on. I am worried that men in particular don't have enough emotional muscle to be able to handle the stress and strain that's going to come in the next couple of years as interest rates really start to bite. Um, so that's why to have the media job, like I was on the Today Show this morning, you know, to chatting away to the, to the nation, you know, and it's awesome to be able to have that opportunity and also to work with people that allow me to talk about this stuff, you know, because it's not easy to talk about suicide. It's not easy to talk about mental fitness. It's 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 sad and it's emotional at the time and people don't necessarily like that. They want entertainment. They want light stuff, you know. So to have people that back me in, in what I'm trying to do is amazing. But as I said before, Hayden, I don't think I don't think there's a more important conversation to be had. And we need to give people simple takeaways for them to be able to change their lives just a little bit because we're under the pump. And if someone's offering a little bit of help that's that's really going to help you, then why wouldn't you accept it, have a crack at it, and even if it does make you a bit uncomfortable? Uh, but let's normalise this conversation because there's still too much of a stigma attached. Yeah, and I think it's great we have someone like you who's hitting hard, you know, asking the hard questions and bringing that kind of thing to TV because on the Today Show and just like any other you know, um, mainstream media, we don't hear enough about the actual grim reality of suicide and mental illness. Yeah. In Australia. Yeah. So Gus, where, where can we find you on social media? You mentioned a little bit about um, the man up on the ABC iView, but also where can we find you in terms of gotcha for life, but also your social media platforms? Yeah. I mean, I've realized how important social media is, you know, since I've sort of taken it a bit more seriously, you know, I've got over a hundred thousand followers now on Instagram. That's, um, and then there's Twitter and there's LinkedIn and there's Facebook, of course. And Gotcha for Life has their website, gotchaforlife.org, which has lots of tips and tricks to be able to help people. So hopefully your listeners of the podcast might be able to go there and 
share some stuff and to hear and to see some stuff. So, I mean, it's all about educating yourself at the end of the day. Like, what I try to do is just try to make it as normal as possible talking about this stuff because we're human beings. We're used to having ups and downs, good times and bad times. So, let's sort of try to roll with the tougher times a little better and let's also enjoy the good times a little better as well. We've got to be able to to enjoy ourselves as much as at times sort of suck it up and really work through stuff. But it's so much easier to do that, Hayden, if you've got a bit of a team around you, what I call your village. You know, work out who your village is. Who are your village? Who are the people that you love and adore and you cannot imagine living without? And are you sharing your stuff with at least one of those people? And are you checking in on those people enough? Are you spending a little bit of time every day just sending them a text message saying, thinking of you, hope you're having a good day. Like, don't take those relationships for granted. It just slowly but surely builds, I think, a stronger relationship and a deeper relationship. And that's what we need. All the people that I speak to that have tried to take their life and they're still with us, which is a huge amount of people for me in my life, they didn't want to die, Hayden, but they were tired and they were they were really, really in pain. So if you combine tiredness with pain over a long period of time, of course, you're going to end up making a shit decision. So if you can share what's going on in your life as you're going through that process, then people will be able to put their arm around you, give you a hug, take you out of that situation, get you in front of a professional, share how you're truly feeling, have those emotional moments with someone, and you'll soon realize that you're not alone. There's so many people out there doing exactly the same thing. So if you normalize it, you go, yeah, okay, well, I'm going to get the help that I need. And if you get the help that you need, then you will be able to get through the type of stuff that life throws at you. But it's so much more difficult if you worry alone, you never tell anyone how you truly feel. Um, you can end up making a really, really permanent decision based on a temporary situation. Yeah, it's fantastic words of advice, Gus. Do you have any, what's the best thing or tip you've received from from someone since you were, you know, whether it be being a youngster or in the, in the media, um, What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Well, I've, the best, I mean, I've heard so many good bits of advice and I write them down now or I see them on socials and I'll take a screenshot and I'll try to remember it and so forth. But the work that we do now at Gotcha for Life is don't worry alone. That's just one simple, simple line, but a very difficult thing to actually put into play because we've so built up now with this way of, oh no, I don't want to, I don't want to bother people with my shit. You know, they've got their own stuff going on. I've got my stuff going on. So I'm just going to deal with it myself. Well, it's nonsense. So like I said, you don't need to share everything with everyone. But if you've got something going on in your life that's really, really painful and really, really hard and it's stubborn, it won't go away, that's the time to put your hand up and share that with someone. Share that with a professional if you don't feel comfortable about having the conversation with someone that you love and adore. It doesn't matter. Just share it with someone. That means that you won't be worrying alone. And if you don't worry alone, then you're a chance to actually build a bit of a team around you that will get you through life. So for me, I've got a, a group on WhatsApp that I can share anything with, you know, but I've built that up. I've shown vulnerability with them over the years and gone, you know what, guys? I'm going to tell you how I feel about stuff. I'm going to be super honest. It's going to be a bit awkward at times, but you're never going to not know how I feel. And if I, I had a bit of a Barry Crocker the other day, I did a presentation. It was only a practice presentation, but I didn't feel I nailed it. So I just sent a note out to mates. I said, just had a shocking presentation, practice, feel down, feel like I didn't do myself justice. And I just got what was in my head out. And I, and I didn't have to do it face-to-face -face with tears running down my eyes. I did it on a text. It was easy for me to do that. I just went, I'm just going to get that shit out of my brain. Sent it to all my mates. Now, over the day, my mates saw that and either they, they said, I bet you weren't as bad as you thought. Gee, you're a tough marker. One boat comes back. That's why you practice. You know, you just can't step up and do it all the time. You need to practice. So all these bits of advice was coming in. I was taking it in and I'm like, you know what, at the end of the day, I've got, I've got this group of blokes that I can talk to about anything. So it means that if I have a problem, I have an issue, I know I can go to those guys. I've had a professional lady that I've spoken to for years. I used to go see her twice a week. Then I saw her once a week. And now I just give her a, a phone call every month or so. She might ring me if she sees me in media and goes, you, you look a bit wobbly. She can sort of suss that. It's like, this is my village. 
I'm not I'm not doing all this work alone. So build your village up and don't worry alone. That would be the best advice that I could give to you and also your listeners because um, it seems so easy, doesn't it, to just, oh, I'm just going to tell people how I feel. Well, go and do it. It's the manliest thing you can do is to step up and be truthful rather than go, oh, shit, I'm not going to tell them that. No, I'm going to keep that to myself. I'm just going to go and have another beer and go. It doesn't mean you can't have all those fun times, but just find someone you can share the real stuff with. Yeah, it's great that you're embodying, you know, what the what you're advocating for through Gotcha for Life. Now, um, Andrew Fafida actually has an app called the the Crew app, I think it is. And it, it's essentially in that same essence. So they set up an app and you have your village and you get notifications when someone is feeling a little bit under the weather or feeling a little bit down. And then it prompts you to reach out to them. And I guess that's another really good example of um, what you're advocating for, which is, and, and obviously taking action towards is, promoting that discussion amongst your the people that matter to you and making sure that you you know get out how you're feeling to them to share with them to help you you know overcome whatever emotions you might be struggling with exactly and you know you got someone like Andrew Fafida who's going to have that rugby league crowd he's going to have that Polynesian crowd he's going to have that set of people in the world that just go oh if Fafida says it then I'm going to do it you know what I mean? Where there's a crowd that will listen to me. There's a crowd that will listen to Black Dog in terms of the research. There's a group that will look after Movember. There's so many of us out there having a crack. You need as many different options as possible because everyone will resonate to something and not so much to someone else. So that's why you need a suite of things that are available so you then cater for everyone. And that's just catering for for men and men, men and women. There's so many other genders out there too that you've got to educate yourself on and understand that they're thinking differently as well. So that's why we need every community to be looked after. That's why I love this space so much is because we are at the moment focusing on it a little bit and there's some funding going into it and so forth, which is great. But we've got to keep, keep going because the number one way to die if you're a young Australian male is suicide, aged between 15 and 44. That's a fact. Number one way to die for your age group is suicide. It's not good enough. It's shocking. So people like Fafida, people like that work in mental health and mental fitness, it's line in the sand time. Action, let's go. Let's get the suicide rate down to zero. Don't worry alone. I think that's a big takeaway from today, Gus. All right. Yeah. What's on, what's and, on our... and look after your village, Hayden. Write down a list of the people that you love and adore. And then text them. By the time your head hits the pillow tonight, text your village saying, hey, I was asked today to put down a list of people I love. You're on it. Wanted to let you know that. Hope you had a great Friday. Have a great weekend. I'm always here for you. It's just the starting point for your mental fitness. You're just literally dipping your toe into the water. It's just like you going to the gym for the first time. And now you go, you know exactly what to do. You've got a program. You've got a regime. You don't forget your towel. You don't forget your water. You know what you're doing. You, you say hello to the person at reception. You've got it, right? But that's not how you felt when you first walked into the gym. You were like, okay, what's this all about? What do I do? I don't want to, I want to fit in. What do I wear? What's going on? Do I put the weights back there? All that, whatever it might be. You've practiced it over a period of time and now you've become really good at it. Well, that's what we need for mental fitness. It's just the start today by writing your village and texting them. Slowly but surely, you can get stronger. Surely but surely, you'll build the emotional muscle just like you build your physical muscle and it will become a little bit easier. This is not easy stuff, but it does become easier the more you practice it. Don't just listen to this today and go, oh, that sounds good and then not action anything. It's time to actually put some action in. Yeah, it's great, great um, piece of advice there, Gus. What's, it, what's ahead in terms of your physical, um, flexing your physical muscles? Because I know you've, you've, you've actually conquered... Um, I think it was the Boston Marathon. Is that correct? New York. New York. New York Marathon. Yeah. So you, you're flexing your, <laughs> your emotional muscles, but I see you're also conquering some some big feats there. That's really impressive, mate. Um, I've got my <laughs> doing a marathon in, in coming up in April, running a bit, uh, raising a bit of money for um, type one diabetes. So I'll I'll share the link to that in the in the um, show notes as well. But it's it's fantastic to hear that you know. Did you raise any any funds for Gotcha for Life or raise awareness for was that what well, I didn't I hadn't even there was 2014 so I hadn't even got around to doing oh, that at okay, that yeah. point. I actually ran for the kids of New York, um, which is a charity that helps with um with kids in New York City who aren't perhaps doing as well as other kids are. Um, and I did a show called Marathon Man, which you can still see on Foxtel 
which was all about losing weight and running the New York Marathon, which is where Jacko lived. So um, that was great fun. I balloon with my mate with my weight. I go up and down like a bride's nighty. <laughs> I go 40k, 40 kgs up, and then lose it. And at the moment, I'm on my way back down again. So I started 141. I'm now 134. And I want to get to 105, which is my sort of goal weight. Um, I'm an emotional eater at the end of the day. I was on today this morning, so I didn't work out yet, but I did a big, good workout yesterday. I'm trying to do a few hit classes at my gym and I'm just trying to watch what I put in my mouth. I'm not drinking at the moment. So, yeah, it's, I'm on the journey, mate. I uh, find that more difficult than the mental fitness stuff for sure because – I don't practice the physical fitness enough. What's what's ahead for you, Gus? What's what's coming up? What's in the pipeline? I've got my TED Talk in April, which is a huge honour to be asked to do the TED Talk. I'm doing that in Vancouver, which is where head, TED headquarters is. I've got about 11 minutes and then a workshop the next day, which is very exciting to talk about Gotcha for Life and mental fitness on the world stage. And to do a TED Talk is, you know, above my wildest dreams. Um, certainly a couple of years ago, I've got another year with Triple M. I've just signed with Channel 9. So I'll keep going with the media side of things, but I'm now putting a good bunch of people around me at Gotcha for Life. So it's not just me having to do it. Some really smart people that are helping me with the relationships that I've built over the years. And I really hope to, you know, through some good partnerships, really get mental fitness the conversation around that um, and launch a few things this year as well, which will all be, you know, for people to to hear through my socials and through gotchaforlife.org, the website. And, you know, at the end of the day, Hayden, you know, I'm 54. It's going to be your generation that's going to see the difference that hopefully we are making at Gotcha by, you know, your children and your grandchildren, you know, realising it's okay to talk about your emotions and not, you know, feel that they have to bury it, which is what we've been told all our lives. So it's going to take a while. It's going to take some generations. But if you don't keep going and working on it, then we'll never change, you know, what the stats are, which we've all, I've already gone through, are, are horrendous. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for your time today, Gus. Um, you know, I think don't worry alone, strengthening those emotional muscles and that, that mental resilience is is a big takeaway from today and all the work you're doing in, in not only in the media but with gotcha for life and um what we talked about all those facilitators and different events um, freebies and events merchandise services and you know the action we're taking not just that you know that the, that discussion but actually taking action to to make um i guess the mental health landscape in australia um better or a better place to to be you know not only with our village but um, you know, talking to health professionals and and getting more awareness out there for for men and women's mental well being. Absolutely, mate. Don't worry alone. Get mentally fit. That's Thanks, it. Hayden. All the Thanks, best, Russell. See you, mate.